A very good evening to all of you. Welcome to another video on reagent chemistry. So in this particular video, we are going to talk about pyridinium chlorochromate, right? Um, pyridinium chlorochromate is actually oxidizing agent and it has several advantages over its predecessors like Collins reagent and Jones reagent, right? Both of them are also oxidizing agents, but they have several issues with them. Uh, like Jones reagent is not very selective and uh, you know Collins reagent is quite hygroscopic. Hygroscopic means it tends to absorb water, right? So um, like it quickly absorbs any kind of moisture that is present in the environment. So uh, those were the drawbacks with those reagents. The advantage with pyridinium chlorochromate is it is a it's not hygroscopic and also it is a very um, you can say selective in its oxidation, right? So there are multiple transformations that it can show, but I have taken over here a few examples which I believe are very important, right? There are many many transformations that PCC can show, but from an entrance entrance exam point of view, there are certain transformations that are quite uh, you can say more relevant over the others, right? So this is the structure of your pyridinium chlorochromate. You can see there's a pyridine. Um, you know with the positive charge on the nitrogen and this is your chlorochromate, right? So this is called pyridinium chlorochromate uh, The physical description is it is a orange crystalline compound You can see the image over here as well, right? Now like I said it acts as oxidizing agent and particularly uh, for secondary um, You know alcohols it will oxidize to ketones and you can see over here There's one transformation that in primary alcohols in presence of a solvent like dichloromethane it has transformed this alcohol into a uh, aldehyde similarly if you have secondary alcohols it transforms the secondary alcohols into um, ketones right but there's one very peculiar um, you can say reaction that they show uh, so let's talk about that reaction so this is the example that i was talking about your babbler oxidation this is a very very important transformation so like i said for secondary alcohols it will convert into ketones and for primary alcohols it will convert into aldehydes but when it comes to tertiary al alcohols in particular tertiary allylic alcohols there is a very important transformation that takes place and that is called your babbler oxidation. So what exactly is happening over here? You can see this is a um, allylic alcohol present over here and you're adding PCC. Okay, um, you're adding basically two equivalents. Um, sometimes you know, for practical reasons, you have to add more equivalents, right? Now what happens over here is you see that a ketone is formed over here, right? The OH group was over here, but the ketone, the oxidation has taken place over here and the double bond has shifted. So this is an example of babbler oxidation for tertiary alcohols in particular and uh, not just allylic alcohols there are certain other transformations also without the presence of allylic alcohols which we will be discussing but for the time being just remember that for allylic alcohols tertiary allylic alcohols this transformation is very very important right what is the mechanism i'll discuss quickly in brief basically the oh the lone pair of the oxygen over here attack this chromium and this chlorine is kicked off okay so once this chlorine is kicked off it will form this intermediate then the chloride ion will come and abstract this hydrogen over here and ultimately you will get this intermediate okay now there's a shift of this double bond this double bond over here basically migrates over here and this carbon oxygen bond over here gets broken and this oxygen now attacks this when the when the double bond over here is shifting this oxygen over here attacks this carbon right so finally what we get we get this intermediate you can see the, where the shift of the double bond is happening this is the mechanism this is how the shift of the double bond is happening and this carbon oxygen bond is getting broken so this step this step over here is very very important right so once that happens you can see now the oxygen has shifted to the um, other end to this end of the carbon you can see over here right and then further basically your hydride elimination basically your h plus so minus will abstract this h this bond will migrate over here and this oxygen chromium chromium bond will cleave and finally you'll get this ketone over here right so this is a very important transformation there's no doubt about it that this transformation is going to be asked in your entrance examinations no doubt about that right let's see one more example over here just to um, understand it a bit better you can see there's a tertiary allylic alcohol over here this is the OH group present and we are adding PCC in presence of uh, a solvent that is dichloromethane and now you can see what happens basically there's a migration of the double bond and the oxidation happens on that end right so similarly over here there's a migration of the double bond this double bond migrates over here and the like the you can see the oxidation is happening at the terminal end over here and you get an aldehyde right so this is a very important transformation if you want you can study further as well about babbler oxidation though i have taken a lot of examples so let's look into the other example uh, this is also an example of a tertiary alcohol but now we don't have a allylic alcohol right we don't have a allylic alcohol so over here what happens you know that cyclopropane uh, also has a tendency to behave like a alkene right 
So in this case, the same mechanism happens that the chromium basic the, the lone pair on the oxygen basically bind to the bind to the chromium. And generally, what happened in that case, one of the bonds migrated and this oxygen was attacking that particular carbon, where whichever bond was migrating. But over here, we have a tendency that there can be two bonds that can migrate. Either the this bond can migrate, like this bond can get broken and this can migrate over here, or there's a tendency of this bond also getting broken and this bond also migrating. So which of the two bonds will migrate? That is very important. Now in this case, if you if you like, even though it's a concerted mechanism, but if you look into the transition state, if this bond migrates and let's say this oxygen over here is going to attack. Okay. If you look into the mechanism, I'll just quickly show you the mechanism. So if you look into the mechanism, what is happening? This double bond is migrating, right? This double bond is migrating and this oxygen is attacking, right? So basically there will be a positive charge generated on this carbon. Similarly, over here, when this bond is migrating or this bond is migrating, there will be a positive charge generated over here or over here. Now, if you look into both the carbons, this, this car, the positive charge generated on this carbon will be more stabilized because this is basically your, a this is basically a more tertiary, um, you can see a tertiary carbocation transition state kind of would be generated. So this positive charge will be more stabilized. That is why this bond over here will get broken. Okay. So that is why this bond over here will cleave. So now what you will get basically if this bond cleaves the oxygen over here is going to attack at this end. So the oxidation will happen at this end. So if you want to uh, like see what would be formed, you can label the atoms. This is carbon number one, this is carbon number two. I am saying the bond between two and three will be like this bond will be broken, right? This bond will be broken. This will migrate over here. Then this carbon oxygen bond will leave. You can see the mechanism and you can draw the transformation accordingly, right? So we'll have one over here, two over here. Then this bond is getting broken. So we can we, we can label the this as the third one, this as the fourth one, right? The bond between two and four is broken. Then we have fifth one over here, right? So if you see the transformation on the second one, the oxidation will take place. So this is your one, this is two, this is three. If this bond is getting broken and migrating over here, there will be a double bond between fourth and fifth carbon, right? There will be a double bond between fourth and fifth carbon. So this is a double bond between fourth and fifth carbon. And on the fifth carbon, you can see there are two methyl groups attached. So we can see two methyl groups attached over here, right? So over here, you have to see the stability of the transition state. So there, there will be a positive transition state that will be generated and you have to see the stability accordingly, right? But that is not always the case. So it depends from question to question what the question is trying to say and what the product is forming. So this was the aliphatic system that was forming. So over here, um, the stabilization of the positive transition state was the dominating factor, but sometimes I don't have an example with me right now, but sometimes when we have cyclization taking place or we're getting a cyclized product, then over there, you also need to look into the fact that whether a five member ring is forming or a four member ring is forming. So that factor also comes into the picture. All right. So let's move on to uh, our next example. PCC also leads to your oxidation of active methylene uh, carbons. Active methylene carbons are basically carbons which have acidic protons attached to it. So you can see over here that this this carbon over here is active methylene carbon. Okay, uh, generally in cyclized ethers. Okay, in cyclized ethers, uh, this kind of transformation is most uh, more prominent. All right, benzylic ethers and allylic ethers. So you can see this carbon over here will be quite acidic. So this is called the active methylene carbon, and you can see the oxidation has selectively taken place over here. Similarly, this is also another example. This carbon is active methylene, so the oxidation has taken place over here. This carbon in this case is active methylene, so or or this carbon, so the oxidation has taken place over here, right? Then in this case also you can see this carbon over here is active methylene, so the oxidation has taken place over here, right? So these were some of the transformations. Two more transformations which I feel are very important is that whenever your uh, boron borons are formed, right? Carbon boron bond. The PCC also has the ability to oxidize carbon boron bonds, right? So for example, if you carry out your hydroboration reaction, so you, you know that the boron will basically attach to the less hindered side. So the boron will attach over here and the hydrogen will attach over here, right? And then when you add PCC, what is going to happen? This boron, which was attached, will get oxidized, okay, to the corresponding ketone. Similar is the example over here. Uh, you know that the boron is going to attach at the terminal end, right? So if we have this compound, like whatever be the number of carbons, boron will attach at the terminal end and hydrogen will be attached at the at this carbon over here, right? And then we can when you when you carry out oxidation in presence of PCC and dichloromethane, which is acting as the solvent, 
uh, this boron carbon boron bond will get oxidized and you get a aldehyde over here right so these were some of the important transformations of uh, pyridine uh, pyridinium chlorochromate and i hope that um, you learned something new from this video in case you have any kind of feedback or if you want me to make a video on a particular reagent do let me know in the comment section right so thank you for watching this video if you liked it give it a big thumbs up and also do not forget to subscribe to the channel because that keeps me motivated to keep making videos quite frequently right thank you so much for watching hey guys so i'm a verified educator on an academy and along with that i'm also available on the unacademy plus platform where i'm taking live classes along with other educators so in case you're interested in attending the live classes you can subscribe to the unacademy plus platform using my referral code that is SETHI SETI and that will give you 10% discount all right and in case you're not interested in attending the live classes you can watch the free courses that are available on the unacademy for that all you need to do is go to the unacademy website or download the unacademy learning app and search my name over there that is ACT once you do that you will get the access to all the free courses that are available on the unacademy platform